Hey everybody, welcome back to the Live Life Simple Kitchen for Harvest Right Hacks Volume 3. We're on 3 already. I'm going to be your tour guide today. I'm Brian, sometimes known as Retired at 40, and we're going to go over some tips and some tricks and some products to make your freeze drying adventures even simpler. And if you missed out on volumes one and two, um, I'll put them down in the description like I usually do. Uh, the easiest way to go into the description is you click the show more button. That'll pull down a drop down and that'll show the whole description of the video, all of the clickable links and stuff that I mentioned in the video. I'm gonna get right into this. This first thing that I have is one of those things that I'm not sure why it took me so long to buy one. Um, I've heard other people have good success with it uh, and that's a moisture meter. And we all know that moisture is the enemy of freeze dried food. So why not just get a $20 moisture meter? This kind is a pin type. And this has made an appearance in a couple videos now, but I really wanted to put it through its paces just to make sure that it was gonna work right. Uh, and it's one of those things that I, I just, I'm not sure how I did without it before. Uh, it basically just takes, as long as these two pins have a contact, It'll show you the reading. Ideally, you want it to be zero because you want zero moisture in your food. But this is a fresh snap pea, and you can see it'll give you the percentage of water content. And the way I've been gauging it is as long as this blue low light does not come on when you put it into what you're freeze drying, uh, you should be good to go. It really just takes the annoying guesswork out of uh, whether your trays are done or not. And the nice thing about this, you can put it into multiple spots in the tray, especially if there's a, a real dense part of food or if it's a real thick part, um, and you can test individual spots. So total thumbs up on this. This is a must have, I think, for pretty much any freeze dryer. It's made by General, model is MMD4E, and I'll put a link down below for this one. Next we have this meat tenderizer, and there's just certain types of food like green beans, snap peas, berries, things like that, that if, if you want to dry them whole, they're just a pain in the butt to actually cut them all and get them prepared to freeze dry. It's 13 bucks. Um, I like this one also. You can actually click it and it will lock it because when these come out, it has these really sharp knife needle type things. But I like it because you can just You can put hundreds of holes in these things in just a matter of a few minutes. And it allows you to keep things like beans or snap peas whole. And it cleans up easy and it's compact. You can lock off those blades so it's safe. This is also spring loaded, so after you get done puncturing holes and whatever you're freeze drying, a lot of times it will push the food back off. It's compact, it's easy to clean up, 13 bucks. My next four tips are gonna to pertain to organization and just kind of organizing your food space um, as well as your, your workspace for freeze drying. So the first one I wanna say is that if you don't have an extra set of trays from Harvest Right for the freeze dryer, that's a must have. That's one of the top five things that I would recommend. The ability to have an extra set of trays just hanging out in a deep freeze like this and ready to go into the freeze dryer is pretty priceless. And if you're gonna have an extra set of trays, you definitely need to have our new tray stackers because they organize your trays very simple. They're sturdy and quick. They're $20. And you save a ton of space in your deep freeze. You can use these to carry stuff down to your freeze dryer if you're not pre-freezing or if you are pre-freezing. So this next tip might seem like an obvious one, but it's really important to have a cart. So now that I have another addition to my freeze dryer collection, um, I have a large now and I also had a me have a medium and I needed a place to put the large, um, at least for right now. So unless you have a dedicated workspace that has enough room for your freeze dryer, the cart is the next best thing. And the other thing I like about the cart is this particular one and probably most of them that you can get have storage underneath. So you can kind of keep your spare parts, your oil if you have an oiled pump. Um, I keep my drain bucket for the uh, the drain down there so it just keeps all the water it just comes out easy I keep an extra hose some extra um, drain line parts pieces whatever 
This cart I got from Harbor Freight. I did a video on this uh, a couple years ago, I think. I can't remember how much exactly it costs. I'll put the, the cost right here. It could be a little bit sturdier, but it really serves its purpose, especially for the price. There's a lot of people that have had really good luck uh, with a company called Uline. They make a lot of different things, but really any type mechanics cart like this is a, is a must have. All right, our next tip deals with oxygen absorbers and trying to keep these good because you pay a lot of money for them. They're pretty expensive, but they're something that we as freeze dryers we have to have. So when we started selling oxygen absorbers in our store, we made them package them in packs of 10 on purpose because if you have like a hundred pack or something like that, they just, they go to waste. 10 is the minimum that we could have done, but even at 10, you know, you're sometimes just scared of wasting them because once this package opens, it's only good for so long. So instead of letting the extras in here go to waste, you put them in a small ball jar like, ball jar like this, and then they're ready to use next time you freeze dry. All right, I've got two more tips for you before I let you go today. The first one I, I reiterate every, on every Harvest Right Hacks video, and that is to use your resources. We have Retired at 40's freeze drying group on Facebook and MeWe. We also do a giveaway at least once a month on each of the groups, so make sure you check that out. Make sure that you like and you subscribe to this channel, Retired at 40, Live Life Simple. While you're there, click the bell, get notifications. We release a video every Sunday at eight o'clock. Check out our new store, Freeze freezedryingsupplies.com. We have all kinds of accessories and supplies for freeze drying, things that'll make your life a little bit easier. My last request is if you're thinking about purchasing a freeze dryer, use our affiliate link. That affiliate link tells Harvest Right where their traffic's coming from, which, uh, which in turn helps me, helps you. That allows me to get the newest and the best information of new products that are coming out, things that will help the freeze drying community. And that brings us to our last hack of the day. That would be silicone molds. They allow you to max maximize the space on your tray. They allow you to basically make portions on your trays. There are tons of different sizes of these. I really like these blue ones because they fit really well on the medium tray. These turquoise ones fit really well on a large tray. I'll put a link to these blue ones in the description. These turquoise ones came from Walmart. And when you're doing soups or eggs, um, mostly liquid type things, these things are just really helpful maximizes your tray space. It allows everything to be kind of sorted separately. And then when you package them, you can kind of get a uniform product. I'm doing turkey broth with these and I may have gotten a little ambitious on the, the cube size, but if I don't think they're done, I'll just use my moisture meter and uh, just poke them real quick, see if they're done. All right, that's it for today. Uh, I'm gonna go throw a batch in the freeze dryer. Uh, thanks for spending your time with me today. In the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to, not <laughs> Remember to live life simple. We'll catch you next week.